everybody, this is Pam Allen and welcome to Lit Camp. Today we're going to be talking about courage. This is the sixth of our seven strengths. Courage is within us all the time and we're going to talk about that. But first, let's sing the hello song. Hello Chip, hello campers, hello readers, we're glad to see you here. Hello campers, hello readers, hello writers, we're glad to see you here. Hello campers, hello readers, hello writers, we're glad to see you here. I've been thinking about this idea of singing and how sometimes when I'm a little bit scared of something, I will sing to myself. I'll sing just in my own mind. I'll sing as I'm walking somewhere. I might even hum something. That's a very, very good thing to do when you're feeling a little bit worried about something and when you want to gain some courage. There's a song that I really love that I'll teach you that we do a lot at Lit Camp, and we also make up our own words to it. And this one goes, the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. And I'll put different words to it. So I go like this. The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, the happier we'll be. We'll read poems and songs. We'll read chapter books and picture books. The more we get together, the more we read together, the more we sing together, the happier we'll be. Hey guys, I am really excited to introduce the author Lauren Tarshish to you today. She's written many books and her I Survive series is one of the great series of all time. Kids love it and if you don't know about it yet, it's a really good series to pick up because a series means that you can read lots of different ones in the series. Today Lauren is going to read us a chapter from the I Survive book about Mount St. Helens and this volcano that erupted there and what happened and her imagination about a story that happens there with three characters, Jess, Sam, and Eddie. And you're going to see Jess show some very significant courage and courage in what she does is uh, surprising and exciting and also comes right from within her. So let's, let's sit back and listen to Lauren and then we'll talk a little bit more about courage. Hello Lit Campers, I am Lauren Tarshis. I am so excited to be here with you today. I'm going to be reading you a little bit from one of my I Survived books. I write the series and this is one of my favorites. It's about the eruption of Mount St. Helens, which is this volcano that is in right here in America in Washington State. And in 1980, it erupted. And my characters, Jess and her best friends, Eddie and Sam, found themselves in the midst of this truly terrifying eruption. So all of my books in my series are about courage. They're about how people, how we find strength from our families, from our friends, from our insides, um, to go through situations that we never imagined we'd be able to go through. So in this case, I'm gonna be reading you to you about how Jess finds the strength after this volcano has erupted, after she and her best friends are in the middle of this disaster, how she finds the strength to get up to go find help. So here we go. And I have my dog here with me just in case. This is chapter 14. At last the ash blizzard stopped. A thick coating of warm flakes covered their heads and shoulders. Jess spit and coughed and wiped her eyes. The sky had lightened up. Finally, she could see well enough to climb through the tangle of limbs that covered the hole. She made her way up until she was high enough to see the forest, except it was no longer a forest. It was a graveyard of fallen trees. Every single tree was down, thousands and thousands of trees. The force of the blast and the surge had ripped most of them right out of the ground. 200 foot trees knocked over like popsicle sticks. Some of them had been uprooted, others snapped like twigs. If Jess and the twins hadn't been deep in that hole, they all would have been crushed. 
The cabin was smashed under a huge fir tree. Everything was covered with a thick coating of gray ash, but there was a sight even worse than the ruined forest, the mountain. With the trees down, Jess now had a perfect view of St. Helens, or what was left of St. Helens. It looked as though it had been smashed by a giant hammer. Its sparkling peak was gone. In its place was a gaping black mouth, vomiting of smoke. Jess had never seen anything so hideous. She slammed her eyes shut and turned away. She climbed back down into the hole again, and now she could finally see the boys. Their faces were plastered with white ash and smeared with blood. They looked like two battered ghosts. Sam was staring down. Jess followed his gaze to his thigh. His pants were torn. What was that on his leg? It didn't look like skin. It looked ripped up and blackened like burnt meat. Jess gasped, oh, Sam. And then she looked at Eddie and she couldn't see his wounds, but from the glazed look in his eyes, she could see that he was badly hurt too. Both boys were shivering. They needed to find help now. But how? The boys couldn't stand and Jess wouldn't be able to carry them out of here. It was hopeless. They would all just have to sit here and wait for someone to come. Jess looked up praying she'd see Mr. Rowan peering down into the hole, but how could he get to them? It would take hours, even days for anyone to make it through the maze of fallen trees. Jess had to get help, but what if there was another eruption? And what if another fiery hurricane swept through the forest? What if she got lost? A hundred terrible questions swirled through her mind and none had answers, but that didn't matter, Jess realized. I'm gonna get help, she said fighting back tears. I'll be back very soon. The boys didn't seem to hear her. Both seemed to be drifting away. Sam's eyes were closed. He was shivering harder now. Jess gently took Sam's hand and laid it on her palm. She lifted Eddie's and put it on top of Sam's. She rested the other hand on top of Eddie's. She gripped both hand, boys' hands tightly within her own. All for one, she said to herself, and one for all. For the first time, Jess really understood what those words meant. She would do anything to help the boys. She would even face the volcano by herself. Thank you, Lauren, for that great read, and also for really helping us think about this idea of courage and what does courage mean? We've talked a lot about strengths at Lit Camp. We always, always talk about strengths and all the strengths that we're talking about, belonging, curiosity, friendship, kindness, confidence, and now courage. All of these strengths are strengths that you actually already have within you. They're not something that someone has to give you. They're something that you find within yourself. And I think that is what Lauren is talking about when she talks about what happens to Jess in that chapter. Jess has it within her to be courageous. And I think being courageous takes things one step farther than confidence. I think when you're courageous, you're really thinking outside of yourself and you're really reaching out into the world. And that's a really important point here because it's not easy to be courageous. I think we have to remember that being courageous is hard work. And what Jess does in that part of the book is that she has to really Think about what it's going to take from within her to help her friends, Sam and Eddie. And when you think about it, she even cries a little. You remember? She actually cries a little bit. And I want you to know that sometimes you're going to feel like something is really hard and you're going to know the right thing to do. Maybe it's to stand up to somebody who's a bully to someone else, or maybe it's to reach out your hand in friendship to someone. And it's also just about sometimes finding the courage to get through a day that might not be so easy. And sometimes life is not so easy. And so courage comes from yourself, about yourself, but it can also be something that you do for another human being. So today, when we think about bringing the text to life, I do like the idea of thinking about dialogue. And dialogue means what are the characters saying to each other? Jess says something really important in this part of the book. First, before she leaves to go get help, she says she touches Sam's and Eddie's palms of their hands. And she says, all for one and one for all. That's actually a very famous line in literature. And that line is really about let's be together, let's stick together, even though she has to leave and go off by herself. And do you know what? I'll give you a little hint. This book works out just fine. One of the great things about Lauren 
and the books that she writes is that things always work out. So when you read this book on your own, you'll see that everything's going to work out great for Jess and for her friends. They're, they're all going to be fine. And I think that's what's one amazing thing about reading is that, especially series books, I think it's a comforting thing to read a series book. And Lauren tells us stories of things that happen in the real world, and then she puts younger characters into those stories. So she's kind of imagining other worlds. It's amazing that she does that. So when I think about imagining other worlds and I think about Sam and Eddie and how Jess says those words to them that will give them courage too, I think about dialogue and stories and how you can imagine yourself to be right there with them. So I picture myself, I picture myself right there with Sam and Eddie as they're like weakly hoping that Jess is going to help them and Jess takes their palms and puts them together with hers and she says, all for one and one for all. And I think to myself as I'm saying that out loud, bringing the text to life in my mind, that actually it's giving her courage to give them courage. So today I want you to be thinking about that. One, in your own life, when have you given someone else courage and that made you feel stronger, it made you feel brave. And then two, when you're reading and you're reading books on your own or you're reading books that someone is reading to you, is to be thinking about what the dialogue is that the characters are saying to each other. How is dialogue helping us to see courage in the, in the characters and what they're doing? Jess says, all for one and one for all. And I think that's pretty powerful that a young girl would say that and it gives her the strength to go on. So that's something I love. And that in my mind, that brings the text to life to, for me is to think about what are the characters saying? How are they saying it? And why are those lines important? to revealing courage. When I think about my reading power, I do think about courage. I think about how you have to have courage to be a strong reader because oftentimes you're reading in what we call genres and genres are different, right? So a genre might be a poem, a genre might be a uh, fiction, a picture book, something that's not true, coming from your imagination. A genre is nonfiction or informational text. And sometimes a genre is what Lauren has done, which is so magical, which is that she's combined a little bit of fiction and a little bit of nonfiction in her I Survive books. And that's pretty cool. But as a reader, we have to get used to all these different genres. And that requires a little bit of courage. Like I have to say to myself, okay, Poetry is sometimes hard to read, so I'm just going to be courageous as I go into that poem. And I want you all to feel courageous as you read. Try something a little bit harder than usual. Or try a new genre. Or try to read aloud to somebody in your family that you've never read aloud to before. That all takes courage. So today for my reading power, I'm thinking about some of the things that Lauren did in her writing that make me think about myself as a reader that I'm going to try to be thinking about during my independent reading time. So one thing is about genre is what kinds of genres am I reading? Am I reading picture books? Am I reading chapter books? Am I reading fiction? Am I reading nonfiction? Am I reading a poem? And I'm going to push myself a little bit to be courageous to try a new genre. That's one thing. But the second thing is Lauren does some pretty cool things in her writing that makes me feel strong and powerful as a reader. For one thing, she actually creates a plot and a setting that feel really gripping and exciting, but they're putting us in a situation where we've never been. Like I've never been in a volcano. I've never been to Mount St. Helens. I didn't even know that much about that story. So she's putting us in an unfamiliar setting, meaning we've never been there and we don't know anything about it. What's great about reading power and having the power of a courageous reader is that in that story, I can use all my skills. I can think about what Lauren has done as a writer and I can build the scene in my mind. I can visualize the scene in my mind. So Lauren puts us in that volcano and she puts Jess there in that hole with Sam and Eddie and it feels all very scary. But then Jess is brave. Jess is courageous. Jess is going to get everyone out of there safely with no problem. It's going to work out, I promise. But what's cool about Lauren's writing is that she's setting in the scene for us. She's making the setting come alive. And so me for my reading power is that when I'm reading and I'm looking at the setting and all of those details, 
the feeling of the looking at these trees that come down like popsicle sticks. That's a simile. That means she's making a comparison, a like or as comparison between the trees and popsicle sticks, like when you eat an ice pop. And I can picture in my mind how delicate they suddenly seem. So when you're reading today, feel your reading power. Feel how the setting is actually going to give you some strength. Really notice those details. Really be in the scene with Lauren or whatever book that you're going to be reading on your own. My reading power gives me courage, number one, to try new genres, but also number two, to get really deep into the setting of a story. I always like to say that reading is breathing in and writing is breathing out. And I feel that way. So I want to take a deep breath. In and out. You can do the same. Take a deep breath in and out. And that's kind of how reading and writing feel too. By reading aloud, Lauren, the author of the I Survive books, is actually breathing language into me. That's why I love the read aloud. Because even if I'm not reading the book myself, her language, that beautiful language that she's written that makes us feel like the story really comes alive. I don't know how she does that, but it's amazing. And when she does that, I can breathe that writing in and then I can write it out. And that's what I want us to try today when we feel power as writers. Today, I want us to try to write a courage story, your own courage story. The story I'm inspired to write today is something I thought about as Lauren was reading aloud to us about what happened with Jess. I remember once I was staying overnight at my Aunt Rita's house. Mom and dad were away and Aunt Rita was taking care of us, me, my brother Teddy, and my sister Sally. And we had to walk to school together. Now I was in fifth grade at that point and Teddy and Sally were much younger than me. They were in first grade and kindergarten. And the school was not far from where Aunt Rita lived. And in fact, Aunt Rita lived about three blocks from where we lived. But because I was just a kid, and maybe you just don't always pay attention to where you're going, I actually really didn't know how to get to school from Aunt Rita's house. But because it was so close, I think my Aunt Rita just thought that it was going to be natural for me to know where to go. She was a very kind and wonderful person. She might have even told us exactly where to go. But when we left the house and we started walking to school and I was holding my brother and sister's hands, I started to realize I really didn't know where I was going and that I was lost and nothing looked anything like it looked back at my own house. And for one, I really missed my mom and dad. They were away and I had never really been away from them like that before. And for two, I didn't really feel all that comfortable going all the way back to Aunt Rita's house. I kind of knew where it was, but I wasn't sure. So I kept walking and I kept clutching Teddy and Sally's hands tighter and tighter and tighter. I didn't feel any courage at all and tears were coming to my eyes. But all of a sudden, I felt something within me. And I think that's what courage is. It's something within you that grows. It's not that you just came with it, but it's just... I looked down at them and they looked so small. And I just thought, just like Jess, all for one and one for all. And I said, come on guys, we're gonna find our way. And my brother, he squeezed my hand back and he said, Pam, I think we go right there. Cause he always had a great sense of direction, even from when he was really little. And you know what? He helped me. So we turned right and then I really did know to turn left after that. But it was in that moment I did not express any fear to them. I had the courage, but also my brother, Teddy, he did help me. So courage is also all for one, one for all. You can ask for help to feel courage. You don't have to feel alone. And sometimes in these days, we feel a little bit scared about stuff. You can have courage and you can have a little bit of that, those tears like Jess had and I certainly had that day with Teddy and Sally. So courage is within us. Today, I'm going to write my courage story about my walk to school with Teddy and Sally. When we came home after school and we found our way just fine, Aunt Rita had some cookies there and some milk there for us after school. And she said, what was the best part of today? She asked in her gentle and kind way. And I said, my best part of today was walking to school with Teddy and Sally. So I'm going to take just a minute to write about that. And as I write about that, I want you to be thinking about your courage story, 
a time when you gave someone else some strength and maybe they gave some back to you. Take a minute right now or later when you have some time to do your writing power and write your own courage story. Oh, and don't forget, let's be inspired by Lauren today. Let's use the details of the setting and I'll try that right now. As we walked, it was a spring day. The breeze was floating around our, our, our hair and our heads. It felt a wonderful warm day. And I felt the pavement under my feet, stepping forward, step by step by step. The sun got hotter and I wasn't sure where to go. So I'm adding in some of those details, just like Lauren does, to help you feel the sense of being there with me in my courage story. So today, try some details. Hey, and if you don't like to write a lot of words, remember, details are in the pictures too. I might even draw a little picture of the road today in my writing. It's okay to do pictures and it's great to do words. The main thing is to tell your courage story. Hey campers, we've talked a lot about courage today. So when you go to your bunk time, when you go to explore books on your own today, I want you to feel courageous as a reader. Be that courageous reader. And one of the things we've talked about is this idea of exploring different genres, trying something you've never tried before, having the courage to really push through the hard parts on that. There's lots of different types of reading out there. So today or tonight when you're going to your bunk time reading, I want you to be thinking about, could I try to read a poem? Could I try to read a recipe? Could I try to read something on my mom or dad's phone, like a directions to a game or helping them with a puzzle or something like that? Can I try to read something informational, something that has a lot of facts in it that I've never read before. Maybe mom or dad has something they're reading that they can show me that we can look through together. Or maybe, just maybe, it's a picture book that belongs to one of your siblings or that you have, that you read when you were a little bit younger or that you're reading right now or looking through the pictures on. All of those things are courage. All of that to try something new, to say, I'm gonna try to read something not quite like anything I've read before. That's courage. That's really important to be courageous as a reader. So that's the first thing. The second thing, campers, is that I really love the way Lauren writes in her I Survive books, where she gets us really into the scene. And she does that by building worlds. She builds a world in her imagination that takes us into real places. So in your courage world, I want you to be thinking about how the scenes that you're reading and stories are actually scenes that the reader has built for you. And so as you're reading today independently, whether it's a book about an I Survive book or whether it's a picture book or even a recipe, is to think about all the details an author puts into a book to help you experience that character's courage like we did with Jess. Even the tears in her eyes made us think. Those details bring us an understanding of her courage. And also that the details also tell us a lot about what's going on around the character. So today when you're reading in your own independent reading, whether it's a poem, an informational text, a picture book that you're browsing the pictures on, I want you to be really thinking about those details of the setting, what's happening in that story. And if you don't read words yet, that's okay too. Look at the details in the picture. Look at the details in how the character's expressions are. Or look at the details in what, what's the weather in the story? What's the, what's the, what are all the different textures and details that make the story come completely alive to you? That's the work a writer does to make a story live in your mind. So today, readers, when you're in your bunk time or when you're picking a book or a recipe or something on your parents' phone or the picture book, I want you to be thinking about all the details that go into making that setting and how that writer does that so that you can remember that we had this conversation today. I'm always with you. I'm always with you in spirit. As you do your reading, just know so many lit campers around the world are also doing that very same thing with lots of different books in lots of different languages. And sometimes they don't even have lots of books, but they're reading any scrap of anything they can find even sometimes we can say that we could turn the captions on our TV sets and read along with our TV shows. And that's also a really good thing to do. So find words in your lives, readers. Find words 
words in the pages, find pictures in the stories, and look deeply into the details and be that courageous reader today and every day. We're almost winding down to the end of Lit Camp, everybody. And we've had a lot of discussion today about courage, right, Chip? Sometimes the quietest people are the most courageous. Sometimes the people who are listening the most deeply, it's really courageous to listen to someone else, especially when someone doesn't agree with you. So, or you don't agree with them. So to, a courageous conversation is actually also in asking someone what their point of view is and not being afraid to hear it, being open in your mind and your heart to someone else's point of view. That's why I love to read. I love to read because I get lots of other points of view. When I was little, I was just like Chip. I was really quiet. It's hard to believe now because I like to talk a lot and I love to communicate. But when I was a kid, I was really shy. So those kinds of things, like when my brother squeezed my hand, those things were really important to me. Courage is about all those things. It doesn't have to be things people say or not anything you say, but also just in your actions. So today for base camp, I want you to go back with courage. Give this strength to someone else in your family or in your heart to someone who's not with you. It could even be someone who's no longer with us at all. It could be a friend at school for right now. You're not with your friends at school, perhaps today or tomorrow. It could be someone in your home, a grandma, a grandpa, a mom or dad or a caregiver, an older sibling or a younger sibling, to give them courage today. And I have two ways for you to do that. One is to ask them to tell you a courage story of when they were little. Ask them to do that. Even your little bit brother or sister will tell you a really cool story. And just be a listener. That's number one. Number two is to show courage. Actually, today, there might be a way to show courage. Even, let's say, let's say a brother or sister maybe is arguing with another one. Sometimes that does happen. You might have the courage just to say, hey, guys, want to play a game instead? That could take courage because you don't really want to get in the middle of someone else's problem. But to get in it in a way that feels positive and helpful, that's courage. Sometimes it takes courage to say to someone in your family that you're feeling uncomfortable about something. Maybe you would like everyone to maybe turn off the TV so you could read for bunk time. Maybe that takes courage. You could say, hey, guys, I hope you'll be open to this, but I'd really love to have my reading time right now. Courage is also about stepping out to help someone. If you see or know a friend is somebody is bullying a friend or where you feel like maybe people aren't including someone in the family or in school, you can be the one to step forward and say, I would like to be your friend. Those things all take courage. Try today two things. One, give someone the chance to tell their courage story to you. And two, do an action of courage today. That will be really powerful and it will really make you stronger too. Reaching out to others makes us all much stronger. With that, I wanna bring us to a close to sing our so long farewell song. The So Long Farewell song is sung all over the world, as I've told you, and many, many lit campers have told me that sometimes in the places they live where they've been through hard times, they sing that song simply to give themselves a feeling of courage. As they're walking, as they're dreaming, as they're thinking, if they're alone, even if it's just in your mind. And I've talked a lot about that during lit camp, ways we make ourselves strong, even if we can't, at the moment, maybe nobody else is helping us do that. But also to always remember that you can reach out to others for help, that you don't have to be courageous by yourself. You can give someone else a chance to be courageous for you. So long, farewell, goodbye, my friends. So long, farewell, goodbye. We'll see you soon again, my friends. So, so long, farewell, goodbye. All for one and one for all. You guys are great. See you next time. So long, farewell, goodbye, my friends. So long, farewell, goodbye. We'll see you soon again, my friends. So, so long, farewell.